guys, this is Good Deeds and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. We're still here in Dallas and we're having an awesome, a fabulous time. You know, we just thank them for the opportunity that we're actually part of the media outlets that they have here. We actually have a lot of more things for you to see. I mean, it's just amazing. It's so much to learn, to gain, to empower you that guess what? You can walk out your destiny. And that's the main dream and mission of the actual event and just really the life, actually the legacy, actually uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes. But just what? You need to sit back and relax and share with your friends and family and let us know what you think. You know how to get in contact with us. But you know, this is Good Deeds and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. And I'm very thrilled to be able to tell you that it is so true that God has made you and empowered you and enabled you to fulfill the truths of Scripture. So some of the Scriptures that we're so familiar with, like renewing your mind and bring all thoughts into captivity and think on good things and those scriptures that you're so familiar with but sometimes are so incredibly challenging because they seem like they're impossible to do. Today you'll see that you are actually designed and wired to be able to do all these incredible things. So I want to show you first of all that the, you'll see I've got a whole lot of slides and these slides are just going to help you to follow all the things that I'm going to teach you. Bishop actually asked me to release my new book here today and I actually wrote a book that's releasing on the 4th of July but it's pre-releasing this, at this conference and it's called The Perfect You and I'm going to, amen, and I'm going to be sharing from this book with you today and a few of my other books as well. I was in clinical practice for 25 years and obviously gained quite a lot of experience from that. I come from South Africa as I mentioned and I spent a lot of time working in what I call the trenches, working in the really poor areas, the areas where people really were challenged economically, academically and on every level and it was a tremendous experience to be able to see that when you show people that they have an incredible brain and that your mind is separate from your brain and that your mind can change your brain, there's so much power that you realize that you have in you. So what I'm going to do today is blend science and scripture and I'm going to show you familiar scriptures and then I'm going to unpack those scientifically to show you what it really means when we talk about having a powerful mind and when we are called to bring those thoughts into captivity and to renew our mind. You see why I call this book The Perfect You is because we are made from God's perfectness. We are made from His perfectness, we are made in His image. But it's up to us to create expertise from, this perfect, the, from the perfectness. You see, He gave us the blueprint of our identity, but we have to choose to make it happen. So we have to take what He's given us and we have to grow and do something with that. And scientifically we see that we are designed to be able to do this. So one of the first well, the first next picture that I'm the first picture, the first sorry, the first scripture that I want to share with you is this one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know, every time I read that scripture, I get shivers up my spine. It's such an incredibly powerful scripture, and it's such a true scripture. We see in science that there's an, an absolute truth. And, and, and a tangible way of understanding the scripture. So we know this, that this is true, that God made everything, but let's have a look in science. So I've got some, some slides to help you follow the science as I explain it. And what we have found from research is that 98% of the human genome is regulatory and word-based. So what that means is that your, the human genome research studied your DNA, studied how you function. And the, it's your human genome that enables us to be who we are today. And it enables us to basically be alive. We have found from research that the signal that activates the human genome is your thinking. So as you are thinking and feeling and making choices, you are generating a signal through your brain and through your body. And that is activating all 75 to 100 trillion cells of your body. So every single cell of your body, which is around about 75 to 100 trillion, are part of your human genome and are responding to your thought life. So if you, what, if you think of this, this means that every time that you are thinking, you are actually changing and influencing the way that your genes express. 
you are influencing your DNA with every single thought. When they initially did the genome research, they identified 3%, more or less 2 to 3%. They then thought, well, scientists often make funny statements, and they said the other 97 to 98% is called junk DNA. And that junk DNA, they discovered as research moves on, because God is constantly revealing his truths in science to scientists, they discovered that actually that 97 to 98% that is so-called junk DNA isn't actually junk DNA, it is actually regulatory DNA. So it regulates the 3%. The, three, the 2 to 3% is where all the changes are happening. So the fact that you're sitting here today, you can breathe, you're alive, is because of your genes that are switching on and off. That's what I mean when I say genes are expressing. And that switching on and off is controlled by your thought life. And, the, and your thought life is working hand in hand with the 97 to 98% of the regulatory part of your genome. So what the, the research shows is that your regulatory part of your genome is reflecting or is responding to the word. Now, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word, if you go back to that scripture, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. So that Word created the earth, and this Word power has been placed within our genome. So our genome responds to words, it responds to our thoughts. So when we are thinking, we are thinking words inside of our head. We build thoughts out of words and emotions. And these words and emotions are the actual thing that your regulatory DNA is responding to. So you are directly in control of your physical nature by your mind, which is what God and is which is the perfect perfectness that God has laid within us. We're going to learn more about this as we go on. So your DNA is designed to respond to your thinking process. Now we see that God has invested in, God has invested so much in us. And if you look at the next scripture, we see in John 1, 1, the scripture where we see this about the word of God and how the word was God and how the regulatory genes are inside of us. We are literally bearing God's image. We are literal bear, image bearers of God. When we see the scripture, let's take this a little deep and look at it from a slightly different angle. You have a love, power, and a sound mind. You have not been given a spirit of fear. You have been given a spirit of love, power, and soundness. So let's have a look at the stage for a moment. And you'll see on the left side, you'll see green trees. And on the right side, you will see a toxic looking wiry tree. And this, this side here represents the fear zone, and this side over here represents the love zone. So these are two opposite spiritual forces that cannot coexist. Now, we know that we have the scriptures, as the scriptures say, we have a love mind, a mind that is made in love, a mind that is made in perfection. We have God's perfection in us, and that is love design. So what we find in science is the same thing. We find that we are wired for love, that every single structure in our body, every single part of our brain, every chemical, every neurotransmitter, every protein, every single thing about you is only designed for good thinking, for healthy thinking, for wonderful thinking. So we have this ability in us to, our default design is to think in this healthy way. But God also gave us free will. God invested free will in our nature. He voluntarily restricted His power to, in order to give us free will. So in free will comes a lot of power. And what research shows is what is happening in Scripture, and that is that our power enables us to create. So we have creative power inside of us. So every time that you are thinking, you are causing your genome to respond. You are influencing the regulatory part of your genome and it is responding. And you are creating matter out of your mind. Your mind is your soul. Your mind, which is your soul, is your intellect, your will, and your emotions. Your ability to think, feel, and choose. And as you're thinking, feeling, and choosing, you are changing the physical nature of your brain and your body. This means that your mind is not the same as your brain. This mean that your, means that your mind is separate from your brain. And so we have this power 
to be able to create matter out of mind, which means that we are literally changing the structure of our brain and our bodies as we are thinking. So this means that we need to operate in our perfect you nature, in our wired for love nature. We need to understand that he has made us out of his perfectness. But it's up to us to create expertise. We have to learn to learn how to step into our perfect you and think God's thoughts. Einstein once said, I want to know God's thoughts, the rest are details. So this is our natural wiring because we don't have any wiring for fear. And the scriptures say, perfect love casts out fear. So when we are using our powerful mind, we need to look deeply at the scriptures, which say that we have a love, power, and sound mind. So we have soundness in our mind, we do not have fear in our mind. Now I'm stressing this point to show you that it is not natural to have a bad temper. It's not natural to get irritated. It's not natural to get frustrated. These are all unnatural things, amen. So when we get frustrated and irritated and anxious and worried and depressed and all the rest of it, we have voluntarily abused our power, influenced our regulatory genome, that word-based genome that's responding to our, our words and our thoughts, and we have created a distortion in our physical brain and our body, and we have thrown our brain and our body into neurochemical chaos, and that will manifest in mind issues and in disease. Research shows that when we voluntarily abuse that power and step into this zone and disconnect from the Spirit of God, we have increased our vulnerability to illness and disease by 75 to 98 percent. So we are living like an atheistic Christian when we are abusing the love, power and sound mind that God has given us. Because he didn't give us a spirit of fear. He gave us a spirit of love, power, and soundness. So we have to learn to understand. We have to learn what does this bit of perfectness, perfectness inside of us, what does this mean? How do I learn to create expertise? What is this blueprint for identity that God has given me that I have to choose to actually unlock and release? And that's what I'm going to start telling you today. Obviously, 30 years of research in an hour is a slight challenge. So I have lots and lots of books and DVDs and online programs and all kinds of things at our book table to help you. Okay, so when I'm now going to read a very complex quote to you, but I want you to, just for a moment, I want you to really focus and realize if you have this wired for love nature, if you made in God's image, this means that you are brilliant and you are able to process this information. Also, as you are challenged to understand something deep, this means that you are going to actually be increasing your intelligence. So by working with me on understanding this quote, which highlights the scriptures, and, and I want to show you how science is, is bearing out what the scriptures are saying, you are going to increase your intelligence. So who's up for a bit of increasing intelligence this morning? Okay, so let's read the scripture and let's analyze this together. So now this is a quote by one of my favorite quantum physicists that I follow. He is 89 years old and just recently, he wasn't a believer in God, and just recently he wrote this paper and this is one of the quotes from this paper. He is one of the greatest minds of this century, an incredibly brilliant quantum physicist. And look what he says, the free choices made by the human players, that's you and I, the free choices that we have, the Deuteronomy 30, 19, I lay before you, life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Those free choices made by us, the human players, can be seen as miniature versions or miniature choices that appear to be needed at the creation of the universe. Remember the scripture. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, so if we look, carry on with the script, this is quote. At the, so God was there at the, this, this thinking, this was at the beginning with the creation of the universe. Quantum theory opens the doors and indeed demands the making of these free choices. So what quantum physics is saying, and quantum physics, the advanced version, it deals with the deepest things of science. It is saying that the most 
important thing is us as humans, the pinnacle of God's creation, making choices because our choices create physical structural changes in our brain and our body and in the world that we live in. So quantum physics is proving the power that God placed within us to make a choice and the effect that our powerful mind making choices will do. Okay, so this, this situation is concordant with the idea of a powerful God. Now this is from a scientist who didn't believe in God, who obviously now does believe in God. The idea of a powerful God that creates the universe and its laws to get things going. In the beginning, God created everything. And then, but then he bequeathed part of his power, part of his perfectness is put into us when he created us in his image. And in, and in his, created in his own image, at least with regard to their power to make physically efficacious decisions on the basis of reasons and evaluations. So in English, what this says is the following, that this really, really smart quantum physicist who didn't believe in God, as he's got deeper and deeper and become one of the greatest minds of, science, of, of quantum physics, voiced in quantum physics today in the world, he is saying you cannot argue that God exists and that God created the world and that that power that God used to create the world, that he's made, put that inside of us and that power to create is inside of us. Ladies, you are always in a Genesis moment. You are always creating. So what are you creating? Because if you create the wrong thing, you are going to create a mess in your life. Because you, God didn't make imperfection, God made perfection. And we are supposed to develop into that perfection that God has made of us. So this is what we have, a blueprint of identity. And we have to choose to find this and make it happen and release it in order to be a true follower of the Messiah. A true follower of the Messiah that is going to reflect His glory. Are you reflecting His glory? Are people looking at you and saying, I'll have what she's having? If they're not, then you're in this zone because this zone generates the wrong kind of energy. This zone generates the me, myself and I negative toxic energy that is real. And it is damaging not only to you, but to the people that you're in contact with. Thank goodness for the work of the cross. Thank goodness we can acknowledge and confess and receive our forgiveness and work through a process of renewing the mind. And when we do that, we are changing the structure of our brain back from the toxic into the healthy. This is the power that God has invested in you and I, the ability to change. So let's look at the next scripture. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless and void and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters and then God said, let there be light and there was light. So there was nothing. And then God made everything. And this power, this Genesis power is inside of us. And God made light and there was light. And Jesus calls us to be the light of the world, Matthew 5, 14. We are called to reflect His light. So when we're talking about reflecting His glory, we are reflecting this light. So now we look at science to see because God gives us science, as I've already said, to help us understand more about how we function and what the truths of Scripture mean and how this huge eternal God of ours that we serve, what does it mean to serve Him? What is this power that He has placed within us? What is this light? So then we can go to some basic science and we see that light is a non-physical wave. Now when we talk about the non-physical, we are talking about the spiritual. We're talking about the spiritual things. And light is this non-physical wave and it's made up of little packets of energy that are called photons, these little quanta. And basically this is God's energy. And what quantum physics is showing is that these packets of energy, now wait for this, are literally waving and vibrating in anticipation with potential to become something. And how do these things become something? Well, quantum physics shows what scripture says through the creative power of man 
you and me, as we make decisions, we turn these little waves of energy that are vibrating in what they used to call nothingness, now they understand it's the quantum field, and it's this, this consciousness. They actually have studied, they have researched and shown that these waves of energy form the basis of everything which sounds so weird, which means that we are a bunch of waves of energy that are waving around and the reason that we are here and can see each other is because God is always looking, so God is always sustaining, so God is always creating. So God is holding us together, literally, and then He's put that inside of us and we have the ability to continue to create by our choices, by our free will, by the, so we are creating our life moment by moment of every single day. We are literally drawing on the energy, the light waves that God has given us, the source of energy. And quantum physics shows that, the, that all reality, the base, the, if you go down to the beyond the subatomic particles, right down to the level of waves waving in nothing, like this, the spirit was hovering over this, this um, void, this vacuum, this, literally this void, and it was just this void of nothing, and then the Holy Spirit created. This is what we see in quantum physics as a description of the potential that is in the world that God has given us. There's all this potential, there's all these waves are waving in this nothingness, but this nothingness is not nothing. What research shows is that this, that this nothingness, this vacuum, this quantum field is filled with consciousness. This, these are the words these scientists are using. And this consciousness is a supreme consciousness. And it's an intelligible and intelligent and wonderful and beautiful consciousness and all the values of goodness are imbued in this consciousness and it can only be God. Do you? That's what they say. Keith Ward is an Oxford philosopher and scientist and he says, he, from his research, he says that up to 95% of quantum physicists believe in God because of the level of where science is taking us. When you really you look at science and then and you get to the depths of what science means, you see it pointing straight to God. So I tell you this today to show you or to start giving you a glimpse into stuff that is pretty complicated. Let's face it, this is kind of hard to try and imagine that we are waves waving in this quantum field and it's energy and it all sounds so weird, but it's not weird at all because if you didn't have energy, we wouldn't have the computer going, we wouldn't have lights going, we wouldn't have anything. We wouldn't be alive. It is the we in him we live and move and have our being. And what we need to understand is that our design is one of these bits of perfection from God. He has laid eternity in us, a divine sense of purpose, so that we can create the visible from the invisible. Because that's what God did. He created the visible world in us from the invisible and that's the power we have in us according to quantum physics. Until you've made a choice and you've made a decision, you just have a lot of potential decisions but you haven't yet turned them into reality. So until you actually think things through and feel and make a choice, it's just basically an invisible thing. So as you wake up in the morning and life starts, before you've actually reacted, before you've chosen to actually respond to the email or your spouse or your kids or whatever it is that you're doing before you make the decision to react. It is a bunch of waves waving in energy and until you make the decision, nothing actually becomes a reality. And as you choose with your mind, you create, you have creative power. You influence your genome. The thoughts that you think becomes the word, become the words that you speak. And as you do that, genetic expression happens. Your DNA is influenced and you are going going to build little protein structures into your brain called thoughts. You physically build thoughts. You create the visible from the invisible. Just the way that God set things up in the beginning, which is what science is confirming. Science is confirming exactly what we see in scripture. So you create from the moment that you open your eyes. And at night time when you are sleeping, you are sorting out, you're doing housekeeping of what you created during the day. And as the DNA, as the gene code on the DNA expresses because of your words, your regulatory DNA respond to your words, you're gonna build proteins. You physically make proteins, you create physical structure. This is the power that
that God has placed within you. And when you operate in your normal, natural, made in His image, glory-bearing, royal priesthood nature, you will then make healthy trees. And that's why I have green trees on the stage. But if you just ignore the Holy Spirit and you choose wrong, the proteins fold incorrectly, the neurochemical balance goes out, the, electric, the quantum energy goes wrong, and you wire in a toxic thought, a very real protein structure that is causing damage in your brain and damage in your body. And then you say, the devil's attacking you. But then you've forgotten to read your Bible that says that the devil is a defeat of foe. realities in your life. He can't do anything to you. You have to listen. And the way that the human brain works and the way that we have been designed and the way that the genome works is that you have to listen like you're listening to me now. There are signals, there's sound waves and light waves that are going into your ears and into your eyes and through your, into your five senses, through into your brain. And your, you, as you start thinking, you set up all these quantum clouds of action through your brain. And at 400 billion actions per second, you are converting my words into protein trees inside of your brain. And you're making healthy trees now because I'm telling you good stuff. But you can go out of here and you can have a fight with your husband or you can have a fight with your girlfriend or you can be jealous of this one or you can get irritated about that one who took your seat or whatever.